Rahim, respectable viewers and listeners, welcome back after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Regarding Sayyiduna uh, Isa alayhi salam and his beloved mother Sayyida Maryam, their story is also mentioned in Surah Maryam. The, in fact, the entire chapter is named after Sayyida Maryam. When she is accused of by the qawm, by her community that this child where has she brought this child from so they are uh, ascribing serious allegations of misconduct towards Sayyida Maryam and in verse number 28 they say oh sister of Harun ya ukhta Harun ma kan abuki mara sawin wa ma kanat ummuki baghiya oh sister of Harun your father was not a wicked man and nor was the mother an unchaste woman. So they are suggesting that she is unchaste because the birth of Sayyiduna Isa is a miraculous birth. So then Sayyidah Maryam, she points for asharat ilay towards the child. Then what do what is their uh, response to that? They say, How can Kaifa Nukali Mumankana fil Mahdi Sabiya? How can a newborn child who is in a cradle how can he speak? How can we speak to a newborn child who is in the cradle? Because he's a baby, he's just newborn. So this demonstrates the subsequent verse that Sayyiduna Isa Islam and all of the prophets of God, they are bestowed and empowered with miracles. Yes, they are outwardly human beings like us but they are the best of human beings so when we say outwardly human beings this only means that they are not God it does not suggest in any way because people have misunderstood the meanings of the Quran hence we have misguided people in the world today because the Quran by misunderstanding the Quran you become misguided so you have to understand the Quran from those scholars who have understood it not those who claim that the prophets of God are like us. You've got to understand why they say these words that when the prophets have been told that I am a human, I am a man, that is simply negating that I am not a God. Otherwise, even if you said something like this to your teacher, that you are just a man like me. You imagine saying that to your father, you are just a man like me, dad. That would be considered as rude, disrespectful, outrageous. It would be blasphemy so imagine saying that to the best of all creation the prophets of or the elite of all creation the highest and most profound um, level and degree of reverence must always be demonstrated towards them because they are extraordinary individuals who have been empowered by God so we believe in their humanness in them being a human being but we also believe in their miraculous attributes that they possessed which does not in uh, which is not indicative of them being god in any way whatsoever we believe that they are not god they are not sons of god nor are they like god but they reflect allah's given powers they are bestowed and given powers by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they reflect those powers although those powers are not like or nor can they be likened to the powers of allah so he says, in me Abdullah, when she says, she points towards him and they say, how can we speak to a baby who is in the cradle? Miraculously, Sayyiduna Isa al -Islam, who is zero days old, he is just born. He says, in me Abdullah. So this is a miracle. I am the servant of Allah. He is negating that he is God. Or son of God. He didn't say, and I am Allah, and I am the son of God. Or I am God, na'udhu billah. No, he didn't say, I am like God. He says, I am the servant of Allah, Atani al Kitaba, he gave me the book. Wajalani Nabiya and he made me a prophet. So the prophets are prophets from the from birth. Some of them. 
Some of them are bestowed with prophet, prophethood later. But Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he was a pro prophet from birth. Our Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he was a prophet. He declared his prophethood. He announced his prophethood at the age of 40. But this does not mean that he was not a prophet before them. In fact, he was a prophet even before him being a human being. As the Sahih Hadith, it says that Kuntu Nabiyyum wa Adamu bain al wa that I was a Nabi when Adam alayhi salam was between water and clay, soil. And Adam uh, when Adam was between Ruh and Al Jasad, between soul and body. I was even a Nabi then, meaning his Nubuwa, his prophethood, it is it precedes his humanness. As his haqiqa, the haqiqat of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad is nur, that he is light. He says himself, Awalu Ma Khalaqallahu Nuri and the Hadith Jabir which is uh, Musannaf Abdul Razak in that the had correct hadith when Sayyidina Jabir says that what is the first thing that um, Allah created and he says the first thing that Allah created was the Nur Nuru Nabiyika it was the light of your Nabi so he is the first of all creation not only the first the best of all creation so then Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam says that he has made me a Nabi and he has made me blessed so all of the Anbiya Kiram are blessed. Our Nabi Ali he was born an Arif. So we recite his kalima. We become a mu'min. He is Iman itself. We become an Alim. Our Nabi, he is Ilm itself. He is a personification of Ilm. We become an Arif, meaning one who, has, uh, who is a Gnostic, who has recognition, who has the Ma'rifat. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but our Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he is Irfan itself so we become a believer he is Iman itself we have we are, we are mu'min he is Iman this is why Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan says rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi that Allah ki sarta baqadam shan hai ye insan nahi insan wo insan hai ye Quran to Iman Batata hai in a Iman ye kata hai meri jaan hai ye. So, Wajalani Mubarakan, he says that I am blessed. Aina ma kuntu. So, all of the Ambiyai Kiram are blessed individuals. They have been given that Baraka. He is uh, the benefactor of people and the one who will provide them with goodness and a beneficial teacher to them this also tells us that the personality of a prophet is noble and his name is a means of obtaining blessings so he says wherever i may be i am mubarak meaning i am blessed and he has enjoined on me prayer zakat and the poor Jew, the obligatory payment that one must make, make ma dum tu hayya as long as I am alive. And then he exonerates his mother. He clears her from any kind of suspicion and says, And dutiful to my mother. And not made me vigorous and unfortunate. Allah has not made me vigorous and unfortunate so Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam uh, Sayyidina Maryam is also cleared from any kind of suspicion by the the, the child the the baby Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam who defends and clear the clears the name of his the sacred and chaste name of Sayyida Maryam so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he refutes uh, this notion this belief that may exist in the minds of people that uh, Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam is the son of God. He clearly says that I am Abdullah and <clears throat> peace be upon me in the uh, subsequent verse. The day I was born, the day I die and the day I will be resurrected. So he is saying peace to himself, sending salam upon himself. So this is what Muslims do when they send salam to their Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Whenever they send it, this is following the sunnah of 
the Prophet, the Sahaba Kiram, the Sunnah of the Prophets, that they would send salam upon themselves. And we have been instructed in the Quran of Majid that Sallu Ya Ayyuhalladina Amanu Sallu Alayhi wa Sallimu Taslima, send salam, salat upon him, and salam, worthy salam. Salute him with a worthy salutation, with a commendable salutation. So to send salat and salam, to invoke salat and salam. Uh, mercy and blessings for the Prophet <clears throat> to ask Allah to do that whether it is done after Juma Salah whether it is done before the Adhan whether it is done during the day or night whenever you do it the command is given in the Quran instruction in the Quran and it is unspecified it is unrestricted it is absolute so this is absolutely permissible so uh, there are men, uh, other verses which mention Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, their attributes or mentioned Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam, his attributes are mentioned and then we have uh, Sayyiduna Ismail, Sayyiduna, um, Sayyiduna uh, Ismail alayhi salam is also mentioned and Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam is mentioned also the, the hellfire and um, to warn believers about to, uh, to warn those people who are non-believers and to re-encourage and to strengthen the faith of the Muslims references to uh, Judgment Day have also been made and then we have uh, Surah Taha now Taha they say it is the Mufassirun have mentioned is some have said that this is one of the letters of Muqatta'at um, some have said that it is one of the names of Sayyiduna uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the main theme of this Surah is to assure the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his followers that the message of the Quran is the message that will ultimately succeed. The story of Sayyiduna Musa السلام, has been elaborately covered uh, in this surah. In the introductory verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions uh, and addresses the beloved Prophet وسلم, and says that this Quran has not been sent to you, sent down to you, Ma'anzalna alayk al Qur'ana litashqa, so that you trouble yourself you make make it a burden upon yourself so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he consoles his beloved habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam other people are instructed to worship whereas allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sees that his beloved habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is engaging and preoccupying himself in excessive worship so much so that the blessed feet of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would begin to swell blood would emanate from the sacred feet of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam Allah Azza wa Jal, he consoles him and uh, says to him that you should not worship me to such an extent meaning ma anzalna we have not sent down upon you the Quran litashqa so that you trouble yourself and then he says that he it has been revealed by the one who created the as-samawat and wal ard the heavens and the earth and his attributes are mentioned that he is the only true God and there is no God but him the story of Musa is then also covered where he sees a fire he goes to that fire and then the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reflected from that fire and he is honored by speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that fire so this has been mentioned in detail also uh, Sayyiduna references have been made to Sayyiduna Harun alayhi salam and the dialogue between Allah Azza wa Jal when he is um, bestowing Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam with the honor of conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this has also been mentioned when Allah Azza wa Jal although he knows and he says to him that what is in your hand a very interesting dialogue so just because someone is asking a question here Allah is asking a question to his abd to his servant so this it does not suggest nor does it mean that whenever someone asks a question to another that it is because he does not know because are we going to say billah that Allah does not have knowledge or complete knowledge that he asked Musa Islam what is in your right hand no not at all but he wanted this to be explained to others or maybe he was honoring Musa with the sharaf 
with the honor, with the prestige of conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is all, always hidden wisdom behind it, whether we understand it or not. So uh, many other things have also been covered in this, um, in Surah Al-Taha, the instructions regarding Salah, also uh, Iblis, the Shaitan, his rebelliousness is exposed once again to enlighten mankind, to warn mankind not to follow his footsteps Otherwise, the result of those people who like the shaitan or those people who have rejected the message of Islam will be their consequence also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast upon the true teachings of Islam. Insha'Allah ta'ala, jazakallah khaira for watching. I will join you once again during tomorrow's iftar transmission. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان